Welcome to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. Tonight we're celebrating the Boston Ballet Ball at the Park Plaza Castle. Supporters come out to raise funds for this important institution of Boston. And we're also celebrating William Forsythe, who's an extraordinary choreographer. There's so much to learn about the ballet, but first let's go inside the ball. Boston Ballet hosted its annual ball at the castle at Park Plaza to support the ballet and honor the company's unique partnership with world-renowned choreographer William Forsythe. Oh, it's fabulous. It feels like the right place to celebrate Bill. Miko has an extraordinary um, ability to select good people, and not just good dancers, I mean great dancers, but really nice people. And that makes a huge difference when you're working. I think Miko's really brought the ballet to another level in terms of his idea, his energy, and the passion he brings, and the talent they have. So it's great to be here tonight. And what about bringing Forsyth here? What do you think about that? I think that's amazing. I mean, as a person who was a ballerina, William Forsythe is so cutting edge. He is an extraordinary member of historically wonderful ballets and does great things, and I'm really thrilled to be here to celebrate him and all that he has created in the world of dance. The event celebrated his revolutionary choreography being featured on the Boston Ballet stage in full on Forsythe this March. It's a gift to the dancers to have a long time relationship with Bill to, as they grow professionally and certainly it's a gift of the city of Boston to have such talent here. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, Bill is literally one of the quintessential choreographers of like all time and the fact that we get to dance his work and that we get to work with him so closely is so amazing. For more than five decades, Boston Ballet has mesmerized audiences with their sweeping repertoire from 19th century classics to contemporary showstoppers and continuously pushes the boundaries of dance as demonstrated by their Forsyth collaboration. The design of the gala event space was inspired by his clean and contemporary style as attendees enjoyed gourmet food and drink. You know, for us it's about people having fun, um, people enjoying the event. Um, we want people to enjoy the dances on the stage. We want people to enjoy dancing in this long runway um, and having just a great time. It's fantastic. This is our one night of the year where everyone comes out to really show their support from the city and it's one of the most special nights because we get to share what we do here. In true ballet form, at the after party, company dancers and guests took to the dance floor to celebrate the art of ballet, an exceptionally physical art form that is brought to life by the audience's connection to it. It's so inspirational to watch them dance. I love Forsyth. The dancers are amazing. It's so amazing to see them up this close. It's incredible to be here tonight. Uh, you know, I think Boston Ballet really makes uh, a huge mark on the city in so many different ways. And to have a company that has such a diverse repertoire in a city, it's so, it's so important and so rewarding. And I think everything that the ballet does for the community as well is really, really important. More than 500 guests were in attendance, and the event expects to raise $1.7 million for Boston Ballet. As you can imagine, the attire for the event is impressive. Let's go catch up with some of the guests on the red carpet. You are a vision. Um, who are you wearing? Oh, thank you so much. I'm wearing Paul Ka from Paris. From Paris, and so that reminds me, are you going to Paris with the Boston Ballet? I am, I am. I'm the chair of the E. Virginia Williams Society, so I'll be going with the ballet in April when they do their uh, world premiere. I was about to wear Air Jordans, actually, white ones. And oh, I, my, that maker would have loved that. Yeah, I put them on and I was like, nah, it's trying too hard. Janet, I just noticed this color from across the room. Tell me about your dress. So I knew a few weeks ago when they asked me that this was going to be a night honoring Forsyth, and he is known for those beautiful costumes in that chartreuse. So luckily, I happen to have this gown from Bergdorf's in that chartreuse color. Deshaun, you have brought it tonight. Tell me about what you're wearing. So when I was little, I spent a lot of time in Africa with my family, and I loved it so much, and I felt very at home there. That um, These are from the Maasai tribe, and they're worn for celebrations and whatever, so I felt like it would be a great look to wear to the ball. Tonight was incredible. What did you think of the performance? I thought the performance was amazing. For somebody like myself who'd never been really exposed to ballet, I always had this idea that it was very traditional and kind of boring. But when I saw the performance and they brought modern music and choreography, I was like, this is something that, that I would enjoy. You are such a joy to watch. What has it been like going from school to stage at the Boston Ballet? It's been really cool. It's kind of felt 
circle. So I remember joining, uh, like, in the highest level of the school, like a trainee, and, like, watching the company and being like, wow, that's amazing. And, and just, like, trying to learn everything I could from be just being in the room and, like, soaking it all in. And now, like, that I'm in the company, I'm performing, and I see those kids. And it's, it's crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, you could you can do this. You can do this one day. To you, is ballet more sport or art? I think that art comes when you're creating something out of nothing. And ballet in itself is a kind of a sport because there's the technical aspect of it that has been around for so many years. But the artistry comes from taking that and, and making it your own. And each person is individual and when you create work too as you choreograph then you're you're constantly coming up with um, new ideas and new ways of moving so I think that it's both it's equally both this is Mick Conison of Boston Ballet having a blast on Boston's red carpet coming up next I'll introduce you to two of Boston Ballet's influential and dynamic leaders that's when Boston's red carpet returns Welcome back to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. Miko Nissanen has been the artistic director of the ballet for over 18 years. We had the opportunity to sit down with him and discuss what his vision was when he arrived. Miko, you're one of my favorite Bostonians. It's such a pleasure to be sitting here with you. You've been here for 18 years and you've transformed the ballet. What was your vision when you arrived? Um, I wanted to to create the ballet company of the future. That's relevant to today's people and um, wanted to create points of access. I didn't want it to be exclusive, I wanted to be inclusive. So I wanted to have three doors, you know, uh, that people could come in. The people who love the classical ballet, people who love the neoclassical ballet, and then contemporary dance. You mentioned contemporary. I know that you have an exciting partnership with Forsyth and we want to know more about this. To summarize uh, the relationship with Will and Forsyth, I mean it's a dream of dreams coming true. You know right now the the gods of, of uh, in a choreographic world in Europe are William Forsyth, uh, Yuri Killian, Matzek. That's it. And uh, for major American artists who has made a huge impact in the art world period, being in Europe for 40 years, coming back home to America and choosing Boston Ballet to his new home. Yeah. And you've designed this ball that we're celebrating all around William, it's celebrating him, his partnership. What has that been like? You know, it's a, I was very open that he was willing to go there. We will show a little snippet of the world premiere, a little bit of each one of the works. And you know, it, it's one of the ways to uh, get everybody to understand the magnitude of him. And so speaking of New England, you've been here for 18 years. What are some of your favorite things to do in New England? What are some of your favorite spots? Oh, I mean, I have to say, I don't like this area, I love it. <laughs> I have to confess that I love the restaurant scene. I love how the restaurant scene has developed. Paris in the spring. Ooh. Can ooh. I can I stow away with you in the Boston Ballet Charter? Absolutely, <laughs> you know. So we're talking about the honor that Boston Ballet was chosen for the very first time to perform with the Théâtre des Champs Élysées. What what does that feel like? It's uh, it's an important milestone. I mean, first of all, spring in Paris love you know we can't it's not too bad uh, but it's a Boston Ballet's debut uh, as a company in Paris so it's a very important it's a key market that we wanted to open just like we did London or New York with the mm -hmm. Lincoln Center uh, and hopefully this is the beginning uh, I know that our industry from Europe everybody's coming to see us so it's yeah. a very key thing thank you so much Miko it's really been a pleasure such a pleasure always with you Beside every successful man, as you know, is a very successful woman. Max Hodges is the executive director of Boston Ballet. We got to sit down with Max at Skinner Appraisers and Auctioneers at the Heritage on the Garden. Where they attract top consignments and command record-breaking prices in the international auction marketplace. With renowned expertise and extraordinary service, Skinner is the place for people looking to buy and sell fine objects of value. It was the perfect setting to talk with her about the company's artistic and community endeavors. 
For 55 years, Boston Ballet's internationally acclaimed ballet performances, world-class dance education, and community initiatives have made the institution a leader in its field, with a history of promoting excellence and access to dance. At the helm of this incredible organization sits Boston Ballet's youngest ever executive director, Max Hodges, a woman who oversees its operations with passion and finesse. Boston Ballet performs 100 times a year at the Boston Opera House. We have our professional dancers. We've got New England's second largest orchestra performing live music at the performances. We're also the home of Boston Ballet School, serving 5,000 students ages two through adults. This is a big, enormous operation. You guys have done an incredible job being such an integral part of the community and you know your school has such an important place in the community. Tell us about the programs that you you guys have developed. You know you have some exciting things going on with Boston Public Schools. We'd love to hear more about that. Education and civic leadership are two really important parts of the work that we do and how we think about Boston Ballet's identity here, here in the city. We're also really active in the community. We believe in inclusion in dance. And so we're out in many communities in the city with our Boston Ballet School Education and Community Initiatives on location. In particular, we have a really wonderful partnership with the Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston uh -huh. to deliver Boston Ballet dance education in Boys and Girls Clubs throughout the city. And, and then another one I'll highlight is our adaptive dance program which is uh, dance classes for kids with disabilities and it's another special program that's been in Boston Valley for more than 15 years now and you know you've done also a great job supporting female artists um, the you have this exciting program choreographer yes is it am I pronouncing it right exactly right <laughs> yes so. tell, tell us more about that we need more women art makers we believe in supporting women's vision and leadership in ballet in our art form and uh, we launched choreographer to support this and our vision is to culminate this in an evening of works all by women artists not just women choreographers but set designers musicians costume designers and, and really bring this fulfillment to life. Tell us more about ambitious art. What is that and how do you guys do it so well? Art making is key to moving the art form forward and, and art making is risky and it's resource intensive but it's incredibly meaningful and worthwhile and important for the work that we do. These incredible artists, they're making new work. This requires a lot of time in the studio. It requires the creation of new sets and costumes and, and it is the number one thing that can move our art form forward and that's why we invest in it. And Boston Ballet plays such a special part in my heart. I'm so glad that you were able to share with me all the behind the scenes. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Up next, we'll tour some of Midtown's hottest properties with two Boston power brokers. That's when Boston's red carpet returns. Welcome back to Boston's red carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. Boston Ballet contributes significantly to the Boston communities. Let's take a closer look at the Boston Opera House neighborhood. DeRocker and Corey are a pair of power brokers who are dominating Boston's midtown luxury real estate market. Just a stone's throw away from the Boston Opera House, the duo recently took me inside two of Midtown's hottest properties. You know, I was just talking to a client of ours and I explained to him why Midtown could be a great fit for him and why is it different from all the areas in the city. Yeah, I think that Midtown is such a unique and special part of Boston. There's so much to offer historically, culturally, and all the great restaurants and shops. Exactly, and, and you know what? I think there's a lot of movement here, a lot of life, and the properties here are very different. And I'm looking forward to show Tony, you know, the penthouse of the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, and then after that, we're going to go to Millennium Tower and grab some lunch. Perfect. Hello, Tony. Hi. So I've been telling you a lot about this unit, and finally it's done. It's one of the most unique units in the area. This is a duplex. The owner put a lot of work into it and just renovated everything. But look at this. 14-foot ceilings, an area to entertain half of the neighborhood. And you included with the unit, you have 1,200 square feet of wraparound uh, outdoor space. Tanya, I got a surprise for you. I know you're a big fan of the ballet. You can see it from right here. Just steps away from this home. Exactly, and that's not the only thing you have here. You can entertain hundreds of people in your own space on top of, I would say the world, but on top of Midtown <laughs> Boston. You also can see the Boston Commons, the Charles River. And when you look on the other side, you got the wraparound view, you got the water, you got the airport, the Boston Harbor Islands. 
Hey, Tanya. Hi, how Come are on you? In. Good, Good. To see nice you. to see you also. Welcome to Millennium Tower. Thank you. So today we're going to be viewing this very interesting and unique two-bedroom home. The bedrooms are split by this very one-of-a-kind living slash dining area. And as you can see, you really get the feeling of kind of a loft-like space, but yet you're at a super urban high-rise. So you have your dining area, Pogan Pole Kitchen, which separates the two areas, and then a living room with this wonderful view overlooking the combat. With that kind of view, you don't need any artwork. And a great spot for fireworks. Oh, yes. So Tanya, you went to dental school in the area and you've seen over the years how much this area has really changed. It's completely transformed. Yeah, and I think that a major component of that has been a lot of these luxury residential buildings. Millennium Partners has really done a great job at revitalizing the area, you know, and they've provided these condominiums with five-star amenities and services. It's almost like a country club in the sky. It is, and I see this one is looking very country club-esque with Antonio by the yeah. wine fridge. Yeah, that's right, Tanya, and we got options. You know, it's always fun to show this building in the area. There's so much to do. Yeah, and it's so up and coming, and uh, you know, now with Winthrop Square on the horizon, it's just going to be one more opportunity for people to be exactly. living in the area. And we really do believe it's just the beginning of the series. So yeah, it's always fun to see the progress. Yeah. You are a vision. Coming up, it's time to talk red carpet fashions from the Boston Ballet Ball. That's when Boston's red carpet returns. Welcome back to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. We're sitting in the brand new Serafina on Newbury Street, a street that's also rich in fashion. I'm joined by Abby Billigaus, style editor of Boston Magazine. Hi. Hi, and John Lamb, Boston Ballet principal dancer. Hey, what's up? Well, let's get to it, guys. Joanna, she panicked because she didn't know what she was going to wear. John, what do you think? Oh, the color was great on her. Yeah, and that plunging neckline, I mean, if you can pull that off, do it. That was everything. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Rines, he was wearing ASOS, which is as seen on screen, also worn by Kat Dealey, Kate Moss. He was instantly noticeable when you walked in the room. Lola, I mean, he had the beautiful sparkle of Swarovski vintage crystals. Yes, that necklace, it was gorgeous on his skin. Who needs a shirt? <laughs> Up next, we have Susie. She was looking stunning in Marquesa. And so classic. She was inspired by Audrey Hepburn in that 60s style, and she totally nailed it. Yes, and I love the gems, the pearls and diamonds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Dale, she wowed us with her Paula Ka. And that's a designer who's from Paris. She found it in Paris. And Amal Clooney's wearing it. Kate Middleton's wearing Paula Claw. So it's just all over the place. I loved this look. I loved how those really geometric architectural sleeves extended all the way around. So it was really visually stunning from the front and the back. Absolutely. And her YSL bag, classic, sophisticated, didn't compete with her shoulders. Perfect look. Perfection. <laughs> And Elena, she was breaking up the black with her gold. She was wearing Su Wong, who's a Chinese-American designer from California. I loved this dress because it had that structured top and then a really flowy bottom, which was a great juxtaposition. And that's what dancers wear, a bodice and a tutu. <laughs> and we had more ballet-inspired gowns. Amanda was in Anne Fontaine, which is in the Heritage on the Garden. What'd you think, Abby? I loved it. I loved how that collar took a really simple black dress and elevated it into this arty, edgy look. And she was beautiful and confident. And here we have Deshaun Tabor. He was wearing a tux by Ludlow. Deshaun, I mean, he was bringing like androgynous like beauty to the ball with like his crown and his like neck. What was the inspiration behind it? It was from a tribe in Kenya that he went when he was a little child and he wanted to bring this like beauty back here to Boston. So it was really like nice to see a man in jewelry. Yeah. yeah what do you think about that? I, I love it and I you're seeing it more and more that men do have the confidence that they can wear jewelry too and accessories. And you can't go wrong with tool. Ivana was looking smashing in her Zach Posen gown. And Zach Posen, did you guys know he designed all the uniforms for Delta Airlines? Wow, really? Yeah, it's gorgeous. I loved her collar. It reminded me of the ballet that we're doing, James Blake. It's in this really deep blue. I just loved the look. And I think a lot of times women think they have to wear black to a black tie, 
but having that deep royal blue color is such a standout. Absolutely. And Leanne was wearing Bagley Mishka. John, what'd you think? I mean, more power to her. No strap. She's expecting her third baby, and it's not a maternity dress. <laughs> so crazy. This is one of my favorite looks. It just took that basic black dress and flipped it on its head. And it was so hard to choose a winner, so we actually have a king and a queen Two of the queens. ball. Two queens. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, who was our queen number one? Lynn, with those giant sleeves. And, and Lola, aka Lawrence, with like just the contemporary look that he yes. brought. And I, that's what I loved, that we chose one that was a very classic look and then one that was a very yes, modern Yes, and the color, design. the vibrant color. And you don't need a shirt. No, no. Need a shirt. <laughs> Just some beautiful jewels. Just vintage Swarovski crystals. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, Abby, for coming in and dishing about fashion. Yeah. This concludes our episode of the Boston Ballet Ball, and we'll see you next time on Boston's Red Carpet.